actually have an implementation working right now, but I need to change some things. Um, so to go through what I'm doing right now here on the left, um, here on the left I created a sort of spec for a series of input and output streams that I would use to do authorization and uh, after authorization, allow the client to make input requests and receive updates about the state of the world, so that they can, so the client can update, um, render the world, and display it to the user. Or if it, if the client happens to be an AI, you know, update its view of the world and use that to make um, to make a decision about where it's going and or what the AI is going to do in the future. Um, so. I'm working on the auth stream right now. Uh, I am, I made a, a like an interface design about a bunch of things about event streams. It's not particularly useful anymore because it would really only work in a system using generics. And I'm writing in I'm writing my um, server and Go because Go is one of my favorite languages for a lot of reasons. Um, so I don't have access to generics, so I wrote some things that would work really well in a, with a, in a language with generics, but I don't have access to them. Um, so right now, I've done sort of the interface design of this whole series of events and then the result. Um, So the a stream is like a I, I a stream is a stream processing stream. It you put some input into it, you connect a bunch of different things to it, and then you get some output. Um, in a stream, I a stream is a stream of events, and a stream and an event is an immutable fact that happened at a single moment in time. So this is my event interface has one method right now. In the future it may have others like IO Reader, um, so it can be printed out easily, something like that. But for right now it's just it it happened it's an event happened at a specific time, moment in time. Uh, this and a time is an implementation of the event interface currently. It in the future, it may not implement the entire event interface, but it is used by. Let's see here, uh, auth. It is used on line thirty-five here, and for these series of. Uh, these are events that happen, so they embed a uh, time so that I don't have to re-implement this method stub basically to imp at, for every type that it's an event. Um, so now that that's, that's pretty straightforward, uh, this is the beginnings of my authorization stream. Um, an authorization stream starts with a request, which is an event and the request has a username and password for now. In the future, I was thinking of implementing uh, different types of requests. If I use different authorization schemes, maybe like I would like to use maybe an SSH, say public key authorization scheme, but for now I'm just using username and password. And so there's only one request type. A request is a FILU event and this is the public interface used by the requester, the authorization requester, to receive the result of uh, the authorization request. So the requester will create a request structure, which I need to implement that method, new request, and they will receive uh, the request structure back, and they will use it to uh, listen, produce, make a select statement on these three channels to receive the output of what happened with their authorization. 
if it was invalid, if it created a new user, or if it produced an authorized user. Um, this is the private interface that is used by the terminator of the authorization stream to respond with the result of the request. So a request or an authorization result is a Filu event that implements this private method that the terminator process at the end of the stream uses to send the result back to the requester. So I have, I have three implementations of result, which are uh, invalid password, created user, and authorized user. And I now I have a uh, processor interface, which uh, presents a send-only channel that accepts requests. So you can request authorization by sending a request. And I now I am working on the implementation of the memory processor, which will store sort of the materialized view of the request stream and use it to uh, produce. It produces a database of username to password hashes. I don't know. I've, I'm not even going to worry about that right now. I'll do that in the future. Um, and so it uses that to take a request and say, did it? Is it invalid password? Does the user exist? If not, create a user. Uh, it, or if the username and password exist in its database, then it is an authorized user. And it will create the result depending on that. Um, a terminator is consumes all the results and will terminate the off stream. So I, I'm going to, let's see, like I have a idea for a function new stream which will take a processor and produce, I see this is where I'm, I think I need a type stream and it's going to be a structure and it's going to have a send, no, what is it going to do? I don't know what's going to do yet. I, well, it needs to like, it's the interface presented to the requester. So it might just be a processor. I think that's what it needs to be. It needs to be a stream processor. So a new stream uh, takes a processor and it produces a processor. Uh, P. So right now I'll just return P. Uh, the point of this of the new stream is a new, uh, I don't remember how this works. A new stream creates a authorization stream that is terminated. So the idea here is that you'll be able to pass in a processor and an unknown amount of request stream processors so that they take, or not request, result. They take in a result and they produce a result. Uh, so you could do things like add in a long-term store of results that sends off the result to a database, uh, a logger that logs the results of the terminal, um, any kind of those, and you could just you could just pass in, um, those in a series here, and they would be executed uh, in order, and then finally, the final one would send the result to the terminator, and the terminator will send it back to the requester. Um, so that's the plan here. I don't have that type. Uh, I do not. I do not have that type figured out yet. I, do, I so I, there's no parameter like that. So right now, this new stream doesn't do it. Well, it needs to do something. It needs to. Let's see. So the processor needs to have a 
output channel. So it needs to have a results channel. And this is a read only channel of results. I think, I don't know if, not results, but um, I'm trying to figure this out. It might need to, it might need to actually, it might need a method like uh, that you can pass in something that receives results, like set sync or something, and it takes a a chant of send only channel of result. Set output maybe I don't know. Um, Something like that. I don't know. So if, if that's the case, then I'd take uh, I'd make a new terminator. Make terminator. <laughs> make terminator. That's great. Uh, and then I don't even care. Well, okay. I guess I need to. That needs to be a function. So that needs to be a function new terminator because it needs to create a Mm. It needs to create a uh, the ch the result chan. Make I need to. I'm doing this test driven, and I haven't written any tests yet, so I need to be making tests first. But I'm. I guess I'm trying to get this sort of out there. It needs to make this channel that is a uh, channel of result. And this needs to not be Chan. That's better. And then it'll just, like go funk. And it'll start this loop for our range result Chan. And it'll do R dot respond. Is that not respond? Yeah, there we go. So it there. That's 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 all the terminator does. So let's see. Ah, so maybe processor needs to be. Maybe this needs to be internal set output or set. Um, let's just call it set terminator right now. No, no, no. That's not. Uh, I don't know, let's just say out, or let's just leave it. Let's just leave it. Set output, that's fine. It's not the greatest, but we'll make, um, we'll do p dot set output new terminator, and we'll return p. So that's what we do here. The terminator is an internal type. What is it complaining about here? New terminator used as value. Oh, that's right. It needs to return uh, Terminator. Return result Chan. Yeah, okay. Perfect. So now we... This is how we create a stream. Um, and the processor should be... The expectation is that the processor is reading request authorizations and so I guess I need to I need to implement this but for okay so this is why I need to make tests so I'm gonna make a test let's see here let's go um, let's do specs.go and I'm gonna cheat here oh that's right I guess that's what it needs to be uh, let's just CP sim, no, SM specs test here. 
and then let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Oh, not that. And let's split on specs test. So I use this library that I take care of now called GoSpec to write my tests. So this is the spec file which will handle that. So let's do um, stream test go. And this is package uh, auth test. And we'll do a description. Describe what? What am I describing? Um, a memory processor. Okay. So, and let's go back here and add this in. Uh, describe. Oh, well, this is wrong. Uh, auth test and we are describing a memory processor so what is complaining about here oh I guess I need to go install that go get github.com so scroll for slash ghost spec boom okay boom okay cool so now if I make tests, uh, undefined ghost spec in ghost spec context, stream test. Oh, that's right, because there we go. Uh, now we make test and oh, we're green. OK, so now let's make it red. And to do that, we need to make a P, which is going to be a, I guess I need to make that right now, uh, off memory processor. So let's make a function new memory processor. This is going to turn a processor because I'm. This is going to be an internal type in the future. Um, so memory processor. So let's go p equals memory processor and db is make a map of string to string. And that's it. Does that work? I don't remember. Uh, oh, right. I close my composite literal. Let's go ahead and put that there. And put a comma. Boom. OK. So we got that. Now let's return p. And that's going to complain because p does not implement type processor. So type processor needs. Uh, request authorization and so funk uh, p new memory process or not that memory processor uh, request let's just copy it 53 73 foot and we don't have anything to return to that because we need to add the request channel. Requests, which is a chan and let's just call it in. We're gonna get, we're gonna get real in a request, oh, no, that needs to be read. Hmm. See, this is the problem. So the problem is I don't want my 
go f my uh, go function that is or my go routine let's just put it that way my go routine that is running the memory off it's spinning it's just going just sucking out of the chain to spinning I don't want it to have access to the request channel that is oh that's right that's what I need to do so it doesn't this this only needs to be the one that I can return. So this is um, uh, requests. That's all it is. And I this is the return p dot requests. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, and does this need to be a pointer? I don't think so because it doesn't change anything. Right. Okay. So what should we complain about here? Um, does not implement missing set output. Okay, so maybe I need to pass, maybe I can get rid of set output and I can just pass the output in as a parameter to the constructor. So um, results, which is a chan, a send only chan of result and I can make this here so this is a chan that is send only of result um, so let's add we make our requests channel that is a chan oh no we need we don't need to do that yet um, Okay. Okay, so I don't even need this in here. And I don't even need this in here. So it just, that's all it needs. Okay. It doesn't need, um, so, uh, so this is what I'm doing. So uh, I have, I like making closures around, I don't remember if this is how I do it or not. So I can make uh, results, let's see here. I have a var that is in, and it's a channel, a read-only channel of request. I have a var out, which is a write-only channel of result. I already have that. I get that pass that as a parameter. So I make in or in is unset. I make a request I make the channel that is has both ends and I set in equal to request. So now this is used by my closure. Let's see, let's just get rid of this. So I have go func. I make a closure that will use in, so it'll be for our range in and it'll it'll you know process it process request produce result and set that it'll send then it'll send the result on the results chain on results channel let's just put that there okay so that's what this loop does forever until the channel is closed and it can't be closed ever oh that's not great I need to change that but it can't be closed because it's only ever I guess it can be closed because I can I can close it from as a sender right here I don't remember if that's the right way to do that um, but this, this pattern means that 
uh, this this function never has access to the channel as a write channel, so it I can't ever make that mistake inside my processor that it writes to the channel that it should only be able to read to. So now it has read only channel of in. Um, that's made right here. Now I have to set. I have to give the. I have to set request as well. So I have to make a um, p, which is a memory. Let's just say uh, bear mem proc is a memory processor. And I'm going to make it right here. So mem proc equals memory processor with a request. Let's put that on a new line. That is equal to request. And that is, let's, let's call this Chan just to fix that. And okay, so now now I have everything set up and I can I can return uh, mem proc. And this is this is the pattern I like using uh side processor. Oh right, because this doesn't have the set output. But I don't need that anymore, so maybe we'll just remove that. Um, uh, oh no, that means I can't set it after I create it. So not okay, maybe I do need the set output. Um, but I need the, hmm, good point. I don't know if I, the reason I had this idea of making the processor interface, um, I don't want to make this public. I don't even need this to be public. This doesn't need to be public. Well, wait, maybe it does. Cause well, yeah, that's, that's, but maybe that's, maybe this should be stream. So, so this, this doesn't do anything. Well, okay, so, okay, so, do I want one method new stream that can take a processor that the user chooses to create and so I could have mem processor or something else or should I just say new stream and they can pass a series of things to a series of result processors and it an internally new stream will create a whatever I don't know a new memory processor I guess that's the issue I'm getting into right here. So maybe memory processor should be, it should be private. This should be private. And stream is the public interface and the only thing you can do once you have a stream is you can just request authorization. So a new stream doesn't, you don't have the decision of what type of, of stream, what type of processor you use, it's just there's one type. And that's it. Um, so I would make T as a new terminator and then I'd return a new memory processor with T as the output. Um, auth go 63. Right. This is going to return a stream. Now let's just make it return because it now, yeah. just return the concrete type. 
are declared and not used. Um, okay, so I don't know what to do with that now. I'll just. Okay, so that should consume requests forever. The sender is now the can close the channel. I don't. Let me look at that real quick. Let's see. Um, Golang close. There's a best. What? Why did that go to Twitter? Okay. Weird. Um, find close. Yeah. No. That's what I want. No. No, not back. Okay. Uh, records that no more values would be sent on the channel. It is an error if C is the receive only channel. Sending to or clo closing a closed channel can cause a runtime panic. Sending to or closing. Yeah, so it's up to the sender to close it. So that makes sense. So to close the, sh the stream, I take the request channel and I close it or the, the request authorization channel, and I close it, and that shuts down the whole stream in one big chain of events. So that's good. So that's the right pattern. So let's see. So I don't even need to do this. I can just do, I can just do new terminator, it's just yak shaving. But that, that's how I make a new stream. Right now, there's no I can't put anything in between memory processor and terminator. That's fine. Um, so the bad thing about this pattern right here, it means that I build the stream from the end up. So I start with the terminator and then I go back through the parameter, whatever result processors that I would pass to new stream, I would go backwards. That's not the worst thing in the world. I can live with that. It's different from the map filter um, pattern where you, you're always going forward. So not the greatest thing, but okay. So now this is a stream and a, so this is not, um, so that's what a stream does. That's not what a stream does. A stream can use, consumes requests. That's all it does. That's what a stream does. It consumes requests. So, okay. So that changes what I'm describing here. I'm going to be describing, let's see. Um, make tests, make sure everything builds. Cause then I'm gonna use Go rename, cannot, oh, uh, fuck, I don't remember how to use go rename. GR? That's a good question. Okay, uh, vim go, go rename. Did I map one to go rename? Oh, to E? That should be mapped. Oops. Sweet. Um, describe stream. Damn it, go rename. Are you serious? Whatever. Um, we'll do a memory processor to stream. And then we'll go deal with that problem by going, no, nope, that, okay. 
Okay, now let's make this fail. Um, I called a stream test anyway, so that makes more sense. Um, so let's make a new stream. Oh yeah, let's see, uh, auth.newStream, boom. And then, let's see. If I make a new request, which is auth.request, username, test, password, test, complaining about missing what I have it oh that must be the wrong yeah there we go weird wrong colon uh, s declared not used r declared not used so I should be able to s dot request Authorization. Here's the. Oh, go. My completion is not working because I need to go install this package. Request authorization, and I should be able to send it the request. Yes. Okay. So now I need to uh, c dot specify that. I don't remember how this works. <laughs> I have not written Go in a long time. I think I need to expect, actually. Yeah, that request dot um, create user. Equals. Ooh, good point. Um, can I let's see? Uh, auth dot create to user that compiles. Ah, right. And I need to import this like that to get. Equals, no, oh, maybe dot, yeah, there we go, okay, good, so why is this open here, I don't know, and let's look at auth here, so this is going to block right now, it's going to deadlock, yeah, deadlock, okay, so the reason why is there's no request ever being, or there's no result ever being made. So to produce this result, I need to come in here and uh, what did I just do? Did I hit cap locks? I did. That's terrible. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about where I'm storing this stuff. Right now I just need to produce a result. So to do that, I need to go result and, or no, I need to, uh, on results, I need to send a created user with the request set to R. I, I gotta figure out why it keeps doing that too. That is not cool. That's 82. Maybe, does LL work? Yes. So this needs to be changed to R and needs to be made. Okay, so now let's make test. And we have a deadlock still. Why do I have a deadlock still?
Hmm. I'm making the go funk, yeah. And it should be running, and I'm making all of that. And oh, the terminator. Is it doing anything? New term. Yeah, it's making its go funk. Okay, so why is this not? Why is this deadlocking? Uh, maybe this needs to be in a spec. See that specify. A user is created. Funk. Uh, maybe that's why. Nope, still deadlock. Okay, what the hell's going on here? Oh, go routines are asleep. Deadlock. Okay. Did I? Hmm. Good frickin' question. Oh, I never set. No, I did. I did. I set it right here. So. And it's returning requests, right? Well, all my communication looks correct. Maybe it's not sending it on the correct channel. Let's see, let's print our func.print e. Let's see if that ever gets printed. Caveman debugging. No, why not? Hmm. These both have the same endpoint in and out they both are in the same channel this is on the same channel as the terminator channel and the terminator channel is it has a go funk processing a new stream is creating yeah like this should all be this is getting created. Terminator is getting created. Uh oh, this is not good. This makes zero sense. Uh, okay, let's look at this output here, which is ridiculous. And this is going to be a use for whatever that thing I was looking at earlier. Um, Pretty panic, maybe? GitHub.com. Why am I Googling for GitHub? That's insane. Uh, where do I see my stars? Stars? That, that seems reasonable. Yeah, panic parse. Okay. Uh, where's there? Just did this so I can do this. Boom. Beautiful. Okay. Uh, Chan receive nil Chan. That's why. And that's on the... What? I can't read that. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh God, is that a go spec problem? No, probably not. This is a nil chan. Created by auth new terminator. Am I doing something wrong in the initialization of my channels?
I don't think I am. I'm making them. There's only two channels in, oh, oh, duh. These are, these channels don't exist because I don't have a new request function. Ah, oh, crap. I wonder if I should put that, hmm. I don't want to turn this into a, no, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to make a function. So new request, and it's going to take, I, I don't like doing this because user pass string. No, we'll just do it full. Username, password, string. I don't like doing this because now if I need more parameters, I have to add, I have to keep adding stuff to this thing. This I have to keep adding parameters to this function, and that's not as nice as using structs, um, literals to create a new type. So in this case, eh, not that big of a deal. It did look pretty over over here though. It did look pretty to make this, but Not the worst thing in the world. So now in here I have to make all of these, I have to make these channels that are getting used. So, God, this is a gaggle of channels right here. So let's see, this is a var of r, which is a request. I'm gonna make a function here. That, let's see, uh, invalid chan make chan of invalid passwords, created chan, make chan created user, and authorized chan, make chan that, uh, no, Jesus, um, authorized user. I don't need this. So I'm not. It's, in, it's totally un. Totally unnecessary. Return request. Username is username. Password is password. Uh, invalid password is invalid. Oops. Valid Chan, created user is, I'm glad that's auto-completing. That was not auto-completing the last time I, now it might be auto-completing because it's a type name. So we'll see, I guess we'll see here in a second. So authorize Chan, send, oh my God. Oh my God, that's, uh, I love you. Uh, NSF, the maker of Go code, I believe. Yeah, I think that's the name of the autocomplete daemon. Uh, this is the invalid, no, bad autocomplete. Bad, bad, bad. Uh, create user, created chan. This is so much grunt work. I gotta figure out how to make this better. And oh, so what this is, see, that's, and that's why I like types send invalid password invalid and this is authorized chan okay so now i should have all the channels and if i make test oh no i'm not using new requests over here ha 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 um auth dot new request no did i not Ah, uh, go install, yeah, good. New, worst part about the daemon though is that, 
make that explicit right here. Okay, so now we should have a failure because I didn't, and equals is weird. Okay, so we'll have to make, um, let's see, or our result um, equals this. So I can't use equals because I have a bunch of channel pointers in there. So which I can't recreate right here. That's the point. I, that's why I can't use equals. So we can see expect the result dot username equals test, and we can expect the result dot password. Uh, we don't even need to. We don't even care about that. This is all we care about. And so now we get green. Yep. Okay, and where's that print statement? Front. Let's get rid of that. Okay. Now we're passing, as far as that's concerned. And to continue building this implementation, I can say c dot specify a invalid. A invalid, fuck it, I'm not, let's use my thing, yeah, a valid password. Let's see, the result is an invalid password. Let's change this in here. The result, oops, well, let's, whatever, is a user was created. All right, I like that. That's better. Okay, so for this, let's see, our result will be the um, of our invalid password, and we'll expect the same thing. But that, yeah. And let's, let's go ahead and write this one too. The result is an authorized user. So let's just do this and say author. Why did that not work? Yep. Okay. So now this should be, is that not working? No, I guess not, okay. Yeah, I was trying to use go info to tell me the type of that, but it's not working. Okay, so these are going to deadlock when I do this because I'm not, or no, yeah, they're going to deadlock because there's nothing ever being sent back on either of the invalid password or the authorized user channels because I don't have a lot of the implementation made. Now, for invalid password to fail in the setup, I need to have already run the request. So I need to run it again. So I base I need to this needs to happen before So let's see here. Um I don't need to store this and I don't care about, well, I guess it should be in an, what is it, C dot assume? That should be an assumption that, I guess I can do that like this, C dot assume dot username. Oh, I guess I need to wrap this in friends username equals test. Okay, so that that does the t that will do the setup. I will receive a requested root user, and now I need to um, request authorization again with the same uh, request, and that should 
Oh no, I need to make a new request. Um, R equals auth dot new request with the wrong password invalid. Now I will send that or re-request it and I should um, receive an invalid password at that point. Um, that one's easy. That one's already done. And then this one, I need to have done the same thing. And then I will send, see, 21. So that's how, those are the steps for that. I just send the authorization again. I should receive an authorized user out. So this will deadlock. So we have failing tests. And to make this far work, we come back over here. And now, okay, so I need a database to store the, um, so we'll make DB here. Let's see, let's see users, and it is a uh, map. I need a database to store what users exist. Um, so that's what this is. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, okay, users declared and not used. So I will receive a request. I will look up, so I'll make a user or um, look, look up now, let's see, um, let's, yeah, it's just password. Password is the result of, users, r.username, why is that not working? Is there nothing in that? Uh, okay. What is the problem here? Okay, I don't know why that is like that. Okay, autocomplete daemon, whatever, who cares? Okay, so I take the username from the request, I look it up in the user's map, and that returns me a password. Um, if password equals this, I create a new user. New user. Um, I guess we can do this with a switch. Switch on password. Oh no, this needs to be just a expression switch. Case, uh, password equals this. Case, password does not equal, or now let's do equals equals r dot password. And the default is invalid user. Okay, so this is good. So let's do this. Let's create user. Um, don't need this. Don't need any of this. Okay. Okay, so that creates a user. This is authorized user. So results, we create an authorized user, R. And this is an invalid user request R. And let that should be green. Nope, deadlock. Okay, why is where are we getting a deadlock? That's not good. Um, let's go look at the yeah. Okay.
So this is a Chan, a block on Chan send. Created user respond to requester. Okay. Why is that blocking? Oh, let me look at the lookup semantics for map. Building map. Uh, I don't want any of this. I want the documents. I want the spec. That's why I love Go, because I can read the spec and I know what's happening. So I need to find uh, map lookups. Expressions, index expressions. Okay. Um, the map is nil. AX is zero value. Um, so, oh, because I didn't put it into the map. I bet that's why. So I need to go users r dot username equals r dot password. Yeah, let's see if that works. Yes. Okay. So now we're green. So now I've now what is happening here is I am processing a request and I am returning a result, and that that seems to be working over here. Um, so this is a little intro. This is test driven development. I, the implementation, I didn't even really know. I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew sort of what ended up having to be there. And the tests were really straightforward to write. They're just a series of steps to create the right environment using only the public interface. Um, that's a really important point. So uh, in my game, if I use this off package, I will only be using requests and I will take the request and read on the result channels. So I'll create a little go routine that's spinning for every network connection to the server and it will, the first thing it will do is it'll expect to be sent a username and password and it'll then it will make a auth request, it'll send it to the auth request stream, it'll send it in here, and then it'll wait. It'll switch on created user and valid password or um, authorized user. And depending on that result, it will change the state of that connection to either um, authorized and connected to the game, to the, the game stream, or it'll just sit there and stay. If it's an invalid password, it'll just stay connected to the off stream. So hopefully this, this is the beginning of a series of streams on my development of the system using stream processing and test driven development to make a 2D MMORPG engine and game. Um, for now, I'm going to take a break. Um, I'm probably going to come back uh, after 20 or 30 minutes. I might go to sleep, though. I don't know. So we'll see where I'm at. Uh, thanks for watching, if anybody is watching. Or if you're watching this later on YouTube, this is the beginning of the thing that I'm doing. I don't know. Who cares? <laughs>